In this lesson, we're going to take a look at something called sampling. You've probably heard of sampling before. The easiest way to explain sampling is kind of to give people an idea of what a large population, factors in a large population actually look like without having to actually study every single individual in that population. So if you take elections, for example, a lot of news, news agencies will try to make predictions about which candidate is more likely to be elected. And it just takes too much time and too many resources to go and ask every single individual who lives in that country. So instead, they will just uh, randomly select people and ask them about what their actual preferences are. And sometimes even with a sample as small as maybe a thousand people, can you believe that a thousand people can be used to predict how what 60 million people might eventually actually do. So that's the idea there and it's backed up by statistics and numbers as well too. So we can do the same thing in an ecological community. So if you take a look right here, this is kind of a, uh, a view of a field area and then what we've done is we've marked off a grid. You did, this doesn't have to be a real grid, it can be a virtual grid. And then what you can do is you can generate random numbers and just use your calculator or some kind of random number generator to generate an X and Y coordinate. And then using that number, it says, okay, and you follow the battleship map and then you end up right here. And then you basically take a look and you record all the different types of species that you see in here. You may not have to record all the different types of species. If your question is about a specific type of plant species and you're trying to see how common can I actually find, how commonly is this actual plant species found, then you can just use these kind of uh, random number generators to produce these areas and then you make a little quadrat which looks like this uh, very cheap to make or you can buy them ready-made and then you go you plop that down at the actual coordinates that your random generator selected and then you record what's in there you do it a few times and then you basically uh, create a table and you collect all your results so here it is in bullet point form a quadrat is a square sample area used in ecological research. So here's what that quadrat could look like. And here's what it looks like placed out into a actual field. Um, here we have perpendicular grid lines marked along an area of interest. So what that means is obviously if you have a piece of string that you've pre-marked with lengths to help you find your coordinates, then you can do that as well too. Or you can just mark it out onto a map or you can place little markers that have been carefully measured, uh, little chips or something like that out in the field in a straight line. That could be helpful. Uh, you generate your random numbers as coordinates using some kind of internet random number generating device or your calculators can do that as well too and that'll basically tell you where to place your quadrats you place the corner of the quadrats to be consistent don't just plop it down randomly it's important to be as systematic as possible when you're actually carrying this out and then after you place it down depending on the question that you're asking or the hypothesis that you have you basically try to record the presence or the absence of a certain number of the actual organisms that you're looking at in there. Repeat with as many quadrats as possible. Remember, theoretically, if you placed a quadrat at every single point along this coordinate, then you would be sampling the entire population. And that doesn't make sense because that's not going to save you any time. Um, so for example, when scientists are trying to estimate the number of earthworms, gross, the number of earthworms in an entire area, it's impossible to hire people to basically go up, dig up the ground and basically count every, find every single living earthworm that's there. So instead, what you might just do is put out a couple quadrats and then be able to figure out how many earthworms are there. And then you also have the depth of the ground to consider as well too. But basically just by doing that a few times, um, you can get a good estimate of what the total population size might be. And then what we're gonna discuss in the next video is how you would then analyze that data statistically. And you would use something called a chi-squared test for association. You might have heard of chi-squared tests being used when we're looking at genetics, when you have expected frequencies and observed frequencies for genetics with Punnett squares, this is very easy. Um, the same concept can be used to help analyze this kind of data as well too but the only difference is that the expected values are calculated differently and we'll go through a pretty detailed example in one of the next videos so 
chi-squared test is one type of statistical test and there's different forms of it in this particular one we're going to be looking at the chi-squared test for association remember you probably looked at something called the t-test which is another type of statistical test which is used to compare the averages of two populations you don't want to get these things confused but you want to make sure you really understand the purpose of each one of these tests so that when you're designing your own independent investigations like for your IA or for any of the other of your science or biology labs that you know which tests are most appropriate to use to analyze the type of data that you've actually collected. So having that in mind before you start will help with your experimental design and make you a solid, solid scientist.